Hello everyone. So today I'm back down by the canal and I'd like to show you a few pieces of kit that I used in a recent video where you saw me camping out for the night in Hertfordshire. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, then I'll link it up here. Go and have a look at that and you can see me wild camping at the end. When I arrived in Hertfordshire, the plan was to show you it then, but uh, it all got a bit late. It was getting dark by the time I got there and I had to cook myself some food and set up the bivvy, so well, the lighting just wasn't good enough really to show you properly the way it all works. So here it is today. Let's get on and show you my bivvy setup. <music> I'm going to kneel on my waterproof because we had some rain last night and the ground's a bit damp so what? there we go right all my bivvy kit and camping kit is in this one bag there's nothing else in this bag because of the size of the sleeping bag nothing else will fit in here first of all you've seen this before my heavy duty ground sheet that stops me getting any pokies into the bivvy or into the blow up mat. The wind's going to be a nuisance here today, they've put that on there for now. Next out of the bag is the bivvy itself. It's the same bivvy, it's the Snug Pack Stratosphere, the same bivvy that I used in my Epic Forest video. So there we have the bivvy bag. It literally is just a ripstop nylon bag that's waterproof and a zip down the side, just like a sleeping bag, but without the lovely filling that to keep you warm. That has to come later. So on this snug pack bivvy, we have two poles. The only difference in these poles is one of them has a black end, the other one has a green end and that corresponds to the sleeve that it goes in at the top of the bivvy. So as well as those two poles, the bivvy comes with, I think it's five pegs. I've got a couple of spares in here just in case I lose any. But these basically peg out just as you would expect at the four corners. sleeves on the top of the bivvy. You can find the top of the bivvy. There we go. One of the sleeves is black. Surprise, surprise, one of the sleeves is green. So push that through. Through a loop at the bottom. Same on the other side. to be. Then we take the green pole, thread that through, put that in the green tab at the bottom. Same on this side, nearest the camera. Find it 
I'll just put those last two pegs in after I put the poles through. For some reason it makes the poles easier to put in. One final peg for that at the back. I'll show you what that is in a moment. And that's pretty much the bivvy set up. There's two ways that the front can be done up. As you can see, there's ventilation from the front. We can zip it up that way. And there's ventilation through at the back as well. You can see my hand through there. So you get a nice through breeze to stop condensation inside. That's quite nice. When it's not too cold. When it's done up on a cold night and you don't want the ventilation or if it's raining, that's what it looks like when it's completely zipped up. Oh, just one other little thing to show inside the bivvy as well. Just up under here. Hopefully I'm pointing the camera in the right spot. Just up under there is a pouch for putting odds and sods when you're in there. If you've got anything you need to keep out of the way that you don't want to lose, that's also got a zip on it as well. So you can put things in there. Keep your car keys safe and things like that. My apologies if there's any wind noise in that camera. I've got the muff on the mic, but it's such a windy day today. I don't know whether there'll be any, any noise coming across that mic or not. We'll see later on. Right, next thing out of the bag is my brand new Thermarest mat. Yeah, it's Thermarest again. Sorry, guys. I should buy shares in that company. This time, we have the NeoAir X-Therm. So it's a mummy-shaped mattress. But it's designed for the, the colder times of year, as the name suggests, X-Therm. Now, that's the mattress, and we need to blow it up, as always. So if you remember from my Netherlands kit video, I have this to blow up the mattress. With the batteries in, this weighs somewhere around a kilo to just over a kilo, I think. So what's that, two and a half pounds to blow up the mattress? Well, another recent purchase of mine, along with the, the mattress, was this little piece of kit. Again, unfortunately, it's from Thermarest. I say unfortunately because their kit seems to be very expensive. It's quality, don't get me wrong, but uh, this weighs all of about, even with the batteries in it, I think it weighs about 70, 80 grams. So, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> we don't need that anymore. That's gone. So, this little thing is not as fast in blowing it up as what my old pump was, but it does the job and for lightweight and space saving. I think it's fantastic. So if we unscrew the valve on the mattress, the little pump, the switch for on and off works when you open the door. That pops out. This is like a rubbery thing on the end there. We're gonna put that on there and away it goes. It's a lot quieter than the old one as well. So as I say, it's a bit slower in blowing up the air mattress than the last one. That's going to take, ooh, probably five, six, seven minutes. But, hey, who's in a rush? So we'll come back to that once it's blown up. In the meantime, I shall show you the sleeping bag. So the sleeping bag takes up the bulk of the space in this pannier. Even in its compression sack, you can see it still takes up quite a lot of room. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the company. And believe it or not, the name of the company is not printed anywhere on the sleeping bag or the compression sack that comes with it. So well, I got it off of Amazon. I'll put it on the screen when I'm doing the editing so you know who makes it. But this is a three season 
um, 1000 gram duck down sleeping bag. It compresses down quite well considering how thick it is. Again, put the compression sack in the pannier so it doesn't blow away in the wind. air into it because it's been compressed for the last week or so. That's better. Now that mattress is getting there. The air mattress underneath is getting there. Ooh. So as I say, this is a duck down sleeping bag. A thousand grams of duck down. The whole weight of the sleeping bag I think was just over a kilo. One thousand I think it's 1.25 kilo, something like that. Again, I'll put it on the screen so you guys know the make and the weight and all the dimensions. But it's plenty long enough for me, and I'm six foot four. So when we think we've got enough air in the mattress, which I'll do for now, I'm not actually going to sleep on it tonight. We we'll just pull that off, do up the valve. push that away and that's it I like this one of my better purchases recently I think I just got to be careful not to lose it it's so small all right put that away so then we take the air mattress once we think it's got enough in there again it's the same thickness as the last one you get about five to seven centimeters of air bed underneath you at night and they're incredibly comfortable Slide that inside the bivvy and the same with the sleeping bag, slide that in. Climb in, do it up and you're good to go. That sleeping bag is good down to minus 10 which is far and away enough. UK, average UK climber. Yeah, you wouldn't catch me out in uh, minus 10. So that will do me fine. The only thing that is missing from this setup is a camping pillow. And that was because when in Hertfordshire I got my camping pillow out and found that it had split all the way down a seam. So I had no pillow. I may do with some, uh, some of my clothing underneath my head for the night but uh, yeah I need to get a new camping pillow that one's gone in the bin so there we go guys that was my setup for Hertfordshire and believe me I was lovely and warm in that that was so warm it was wonderful the only thing I did miss as I say was a pillow other than that I got a really good night's sleep and I shall be using it again soon, hopefully. So, there we go, guys. That's my bivvy camping setup for the winter. If I've missed anything out, guys, or if you've got any questions you want to ask me about it, then uh, please do use the comments below. I reply to every comment, as you know. So, uh, and thanks very much, as well, as always, for leaving me so many nice comments. Really is appreciated. Hertfordshire part two will be out very soon so uh, I hope you're looking forward to that one and see you all again soon. Cheers then guys, ta-da.